So we're trying to expand these offerings for students. And so I'm asking that you consider writing an honor section. In particular though, for those of you who have been hesitant in the past, uh, we do now have a process and actually uh, Jeannie was part of the pilot of this. We have a process now where a student who, let's say for example, is in the last year or their last semester and the classes that we're offering in honors don't meet or fit with their needs for their GE or major prep. And so what we developed is a process for students to do essentially a special arrangement honors course. And, and so the guideline is, did someone have a question or comment? Okay, so basically um, what the student did in, in the case uh, with Jeannie and accounting was uh, the student wanted to take accounting, but honors was, was not being offered in that particular semester. But because the class had already been approved for honors, we were able to add a section for the student. So essentially it became a combined class. That is, she had both honors and non-honors, actually specifically one student completing the honors requirements. And so that student was able to complete his honors requirements. So again, um, some of you may have thought about it, but may think I don't really necessarily want a whole section of honors, um, but it gives the student the opportunity. But what has to happen is the class has to be the class has to be approved for honors in order to offer that option to students. Uh, Shin, yes. Yeah, Melissa. Uh, I'm, I teach programming class, like C++ and Java. So only one class. So I don't think it fits for an honor class. But is there any way I can, like a genie has some, uh, you know, some special project. So maybe one or two students can can you know can be categorized as a honor class exactly yeah, yeah exactly and okay. that's what we're trying to accomplish exactly what you described so uh -huh. and even sometimes yeah if you have a student that maybe that's their major um but in order to do that we do have to get the course approved okay for honors uh, oh. and again Shannon, it might not be your intention to ever offer it on the schedule uh -huh. but if we have it approved then we can let the students know that they can take it through this special arrangement, yeah. Okay. So essentially it is a, an additional project. And um, yeah. the nice thing is your colleagues, mm -hmm. um, Allison, Jeannie, mm -hmm. Cynthia have all taught um, this sort of combination where you have both honors and non-honors. So okay. Uh, I okay. would ask that. So I'll ask Jeannie, she's, she's very helpful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and thanks Jeannie for putting that in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, amazing student. Um, and that's right, he did. He um, was accepted to numerous UCs, but he, Berkeley was definitely his number one pick, so he did get in. Yes, yeah, Cynthia. Uh, I, hi, I would say the only, uh, one of the disadvantages of, in, of adding students to a non-honors course, right, is that they don't get the benefit of interacting with other honor students. And in, I mean, the course content is the same, like when I teach Art History 105 or 106, but the delivery and what we do in class is quite different. We focus on research. We do have more, it's a little bit more like a seminar. We go over the readings more than we would. And so I, yeah, just, just, just to consider that. I think, mm -hmm. yes, the content is the same, but the experience is designed usually um, in a way that is going to encourage exchange amongst un other honor students. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. you would just let the student know if you're willing to take them into a non-honors -honor course and that they would be the only one to, you know, taking that path. Um, I, I, I would tell the student, oh, give them the option saying, oh, well, if you wait till next semester, then you could have the benefit of taking it with, with others and you know, your peers who are also honor students. Yes, thank you for that. Yes, it's an important point, Cynthia. In fact, I mean, it, it does raise a bigger conversation about even the combined courses. And But yeah, that's that's a good point for sure. Are there any other questions or comments about that? Okay, well, that, that's all I have. So thank you for your time. And if any of you are interested in considering writing an honors class, I should mention one more thing. Um, we do now have a few online honors courses, which for a long time we had it, but then of course 
you know, that thing that happened back in 19 changed everything. So we have now honors online. So that's another option. Uh, same thing. Um, it gets a little more challenging to combine honors and non-honors in an on online format because some of the guidelines from distance ed. But anyway, um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, thanks again, George. I appreciate the time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melissa. Okay. I'll see you out in the course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Okay. Uh, next item. Um, where is this? Tattoo apprenticeship. Oh, that's a little rough. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, um, spend the the next time. We don't really, uh, I, I, it's just my personal opinion. I don't feel like we have conversations about a uh, curriculum. Uh, and a lot of times these are just kind of things that happen naturally uh, within our areas. Um, but this one's a little bit of a different uh, kind of moving forward. So I wanted to open it up to a, a larger conversation and introduce it. So the, the faculty who's running with it is Sandra Lowe. Uh, and then uh, in collaboration with Danny Cancino. Uh, and then I also invited um, as a guest, uh, Dean uh, Bridget Hernandez, who's here. Uh, and one of the things I'm, um, I really wanna encourage is um, more kind of collaboration between divisions, because a lot of times in the past, a lot of these divisions were